Hi y'all. Welcome back. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I had meant to upload Monday, but I wasn't really feeling very well. Um, but here we are. We're here. We're doing it. So, um, I'm feeling way better than I was before. And I just wanted to thank everybody for all the prayers and the well wishes. They've definitely helped. I feel so much better than what I did before. Um, can't wear makeup because my face is still like broke out, but who really cares about that anyway? Um, so today I wanted to share with you guys some, uh, items that I use in my everyday life to kind of adapt to, uh, the seeing world and just a few things. I have, I have loads of stuff, but I just grabbed a few things around me that I, um, use probably the most. And then, um, or that pertain to crafting. And then I have a finished object, a whip, some yarn. Um, I think that's it. I don't know. We're just going to go for it. So, I guess the first thing, some yarny goodness. I don't really, uh, go for the color purple all that much. I don't dislike it. Um but it's not one that I really go for. But I saw the KC, I think this is called, oh my gosh, what is this called? I think this is called Movement. Um, I saw this in Joann's. Let me, where is my lighting button? There we go. I saw this in Joann's. Um, it's like, purple and light gray and navy blue and I remembered that I had this true boo at home and I thought how nice these would look together I don't know if this lighting is good I really hope you guys don't fall my clamp oh that's that's the brightness not the actual color my clamp broke so I'm just hoping it holds together. That's way better. But yeah, I thought these would look really nice together. There's a few tops on Ravelry that I've seen that I would love to make. And um, I don't know. I just really thought that those looked good. So I got that. My hubby. <coughs> excuse me. Grabbed these for me. On his way home from work. Um, the Caron cotton lava cakes. This is just the gray one. Um, my eyes are really, really strained today, so I'm not really reading all the stats on this stuff, and I think you guys mostly know them anyway. Um, but just when my eyes are really strained, I, you know, kind of, I'm protecting what vision I have left, so I don't really push it. Um, but he got this for me because they're clearance, and it is cotton acrylic, and it's light enough that I thought this would be a fun little experiment to um, over dye uh, and see how it turned out. Okay, um, finished object being a hair or a fiber, probably a fiber. Um, I did not finish this recently, being transparent. This was my I think this was my first cardigan, or not cardigan, goodness, um, my first sweater that I made. Um, I brought it out. I was going through some of my finished objects because I, I don't usually really keep much anything I make, and so I was getting stuff out to donate. I have a couple st things set aside that I was going to show you guys and see if anybody thought it would be good to put in a giveaway or if that's kind of corny I don't know they're probably not great I don't know that anybody will want them but anyway um and I pulled this out and he got very excited um because I kind of put it in time out <laughs> by the time I got done with it I didn't want to weave in the ends it wasn't winter anymore anyway but um so he picked out this yarn. I have no idea if this is showing. I really hope that it is. 
uh, here's the sleeve. So what this is, is the, um, I don't know that it's even carried at Hobby Lobby anymore, I'm not sure. This is the Yarn Bee, oh honestly I would be guessing, it was a really furry yarn in a cake that is ombre, or yeah, ombre. Um, and I held it together. I got a Kramer mystery box and I hated everything in it. It was awful. Um, but he really liked this, like, very orange. Uh, it's, it's the orange that you see held together with the ombre. He loved that. I thought it was atrocious, but he loved it. So I held them together. And this was actually the sweater I was telling you guys about in another video that the Hobby Lobby uh, plastic ergonomic hooks, um, that it just goes through this sort of thing with like a dream. It doesn't work for me with anything else, but that, it goes through like a dream. Um, anyway, so I made that for him. And I have the same yarn for me, but in a different color. Mine is like blues and teals and I think there's some gray in there too and then um the yarn that I'm going to hold it together with is the Spinessa I think that's what it's called uh from Yarn Bee it is a navy blue so I just haven't done it yet I'll probably make it this winter um this is my whip this is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. It's a long rectangle shawl. I only have, um, I think, one or two more repeats to do on it. And it's this really cool, like, Argyle. To me, this looks Argyle. And that might be what it's called. I hope y'all can see it. Um, but this is made out of the, uh, is it Gazal? Yeah. This is made out of the Gazal rock and roll. And this is in the blue, the navy blue. Um, so I'm working on that. I'm not too far from being done with it. I haven't worked on it in a little bit. I finally picked it up and worked on it some more. And then I actually, where did it go? Wanted you guys' opinion. Oh, here it is. So I'm doing the Bago Day uh, vest, her most recent vest that she's doing. And oh, so this is the this is the back panel. I'm working on one of the front panels, and I knew that this was going to happen. She used a uh, comfy cotton, so just a solid. I'm using an ombre gradient yarn. Um, and so because this is so like wide, I knew that the striping was going to be shorter versus the front panels. Front panels are much, much shorter because it's not like a cardigan where it's meant to close. So the ombre is working up very very different I'm just gonna go with it and just see what happens it'll be that very like handmade look um, so I know the front panels are gonna be a much more slow slow gradient it's not gonna have as many repeats through the color transitions um, and the sleeves are probably gonna work up fairly similar to this um let's see the sleeves will probably be a little bit they'll be a little bit bigger but they're gonna work up pretty close to this so my thought is like the back is gonna look very different from the front you're not gonna see them both at the same time I should just go with it right and just let it be what it's gonna be and not worry that it's not it's hard for me that it's not going to be perfectly matched um my husband's sweater I dug through the yarn until I started it at the exact same place this is the back this is the front 
because it needed to be the same. Um, the same for the arms or for the sleeves. Uh, I wanted them to be symmetrical. That is just an OCD thing of mine, and I don't use that term lightly. I am diagnosed OCD. Um, anyway, I think it'll still be okay. I mean, I'm gonna do it anyway, but yeah, so that, I'm still working on that. Um, okay. So, reminder, tomorrow, you guys are tilted, I'm so sorry, my thing is broken. I'm afraid if I mess with it, you're gonna fall. Um, tomorrow is the my drawing for my 200 subscriber giveaway, and we are 24 away from 300. With this, my goal is to get to 500 for my um, community tab, of course, but uh, you know, a thousand and working towards monetization thousand is gonna you know the monetization is gonna be a big one and so I have a bag going be the change you wish to see in the world I love that saying and I'm going to keep filling it as we go with nice snazzy things for a giveaway for the big giveaway so I'm going to show you this yarn haul because some of this is going in there so I ordered off of Facebook Marketplace, D, it is all your fault, you're an enabler, I blame you. Um, and so, okay, so the first things that's going in it, I had never heard of this, but I'm fairly new to the game. Um, Silky Wool by Elspeth, I don't remember her name uh, my sighty people can see that on the screen um, for my visually impaired folk this is wool and silk and it feels okay I do need to read this stuff it feels like what well, I've never put my hands on Noro I want the Noro Kira something, I don't know. Um, there's this one really pretty colorway that is just very pretty. Um, one of these days, but I have to assume this is what it feels like. If you've ever felt Cascade Tangier, it feels that way to me. Um, this is 45% wool, 35% silk, 25 or 20% 20 nylon, 50 grams, 175 meters, so probably like 200 yards. Um, it's not rough. It's not like silky, silky soft, but, um, it's nice and it's in a denim color. Um, so there are five, that's only four. There are five of those going in the bag. Now, for those of you who are allergic to wool or who are vegan, um, if you are the winner of any of my giveaways, I will substitute those items and I do try to keep them separate even in my own stash um, because like alpaca I can't have more than like 10 or 20 percent alpaca unless it's like baby alpaca I don't seem to react to as much but um, I do try to keep them separate for allergies and then um, well I guess yeah, mostly just for allergies. Um, you, and if they're in the same bag, then I usually keep them bagged up and keep them separate that way. So I do try to keep that in mind. Uh, then there was this. And when I hit 500, for my community tab, I will have a bigger giveaway than what the like two, three, and four hundred subscriber giveaways are gonna be. So what's going in this bag right now, some of it will probably go into that 500. I'm not sure exactly how I'm divvying it up. I will of course be 
I'm so sorry. Open and honest with you guys about it. I don't have a huge, huge yarn stash to pull from or a financial pull to, you know, get a lot of stuff. I'm trying to get good stuff because I kind of, I feel bad, honestly. I feel like, I feel like my giveaways, I was boxing up what I have for the next few giveaways coming up and I, I feel bad. I feel like they're not, they're not very good. Um, so I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, so this is Malabrigo. Uh, this is baby Silpaca lace, 50 grams, 420 yards, 70% baby alpaca, 30% silk. And y'all, this is so soft. Oh my gosh. So it makes me think of like old slick, oil slick. <laughs> it's one of those words that my southern comes out um but it's very pretty it's so incredibly soft oh my gosh so that's going in there and then this is from I think it was Miss Babs um sorry I'm trying to find it yeah Miss Babs it's a lace weight merino and silk. It's 65% merino, 35% tussa silk, about 400 yards, 2.3 ounces. And boy, isn't that pretty. So, just gorgeous. So that's going in there. Um... Uh, they, there was also these two blank, um, I'm using these to dye, but I just was showing you, it's Baraco something or other, Highland Sport. Um, where did the rest of it go? I also got, this was all from the same seller. I also got these Cloudborn. Oh, you know what? I said that other one was Baracko. I was wrong. It was Cloudborn. Um, these are... Cloudborn. Upside down. Highland Superwash Sock Twist. Um, so I thought these were kind of cool. I like this one. Then there was... These were originally Grab Me because I think they just look so pretty together. These are Cloudborn as well. Merino Superwash Sock Twist. I'd never had Cloudborn before. And it was a lot. Of, like a, I bought a, not a lot, but like a bundle. Um, so I got a pretty good deal on it. I was kind of upset about something. I'm not going to focus on it, but um, just one of those things that happens sometimes. And, um... You know, this happens to everybody. I don't think this was specifically a blind thing. I don't know. I did let the person know. Uh, you know, I told them, I'm blind. I'm so sorry. Because I was asking a bunch of questions that were clear to a sighted person. And so I always worry that people are going to get irritated by me asking a bunch of questions. Especially if they're rather obvious. And, um... When I bought this stuff, there was supposed to be two balls of this uh, Baracko Folio. It's this blue. It's so luscious. It is so soft. Um, it is 65% super fine alpaca, 35% rayon. And oh my gosh, it is just, it is dreamy. 
well, when I got it, and, and I was charged, you know, what I was charged for this. But when I got it, and, and it was supposed to be two of these exactly. Well, it's very evident that that is not what happened. This is a, it, I could be wrong, but it feels to me this is just a, um, oh man, words are hard, y'all. Um, acrylic, a value. I always get there. A value acrylic. It feels like a value ac acrylic that got rolled up. And this is the same. Oh man, I got a fiber. This is the the same ball band as this. It has all the same information. It's the same lot number. It's the same colorway. This is a ball band that came from a genuine a, a genuine thing but that was just tucked into this one. And that's just unfortunate. Um, it is what it is. It happens. I'm not the first person that's been duped. I'm not going to be the last person that's been duped. So, whatever. I choose not to give my energy to that. I still, even with that, got a really good deal. Uh, because I'm not 100% for sure what it is, I'm not putting it in the giveaway because I would feel bad if it were something, I, I don't know. Everything else um, was great uh, from the other seller. Everything was great. But yeah, that one, not so much. But anyway, then I have, uh, how many do I have? One, two, three, four. I have five balls of... Come on now. Encore DK. I've never had this stuff. Um, this is by Plymouth. It is 25% wool, 75% acrylic. I have four of these green and one blue. And don't worry, those of you who can't have wool and stuff like that, there, I promise, there's going to be lots of, you know, uh, plant fiber and, and acrylic and things like that. This was just right here and I'm, you know, putting it where it goes while I show you guys. So anyway, so that was that. Okay. Now I wanted to show you guys some stuff that I use. I feel like there was more I wanted to say or show, but I can't remember. My brain is not firing on all cylinders today. Um, so, if I forget something, I guess it will be in the next video. Because it's not like I haven't done that a bunch already. <laughs> I seem to forget something every video. Um, okay, so some of the things that I use to craft with, obviously, Glasses are a big thing for me. They are not for distance. They are solely for, um, you know, just like close-up stuff. They are my very thick Coke bottle glasses. So I wear one of these in my pretty hollow case. I love it. And over that, I wear these. And I will link these below. It has a light. And then it has a case of five. I'm not sure where one of them went. It has a case of these um, magnification lenses that pop up in there. And you can pull this you can pull it closer to you or further away it you know goes up and stuff and has lights I lost the little 
squishies for the nose thing, which has been a little unfortunate. Um, and then it charges by USB. So I wear glasses and that for crocheting. Most of the time, I don't look at what I crochet. I do it all by feel. But uh, sometimes I do need to look at it if it's a um, like cable work. I mean, most cable work, once I get it done, I don't have to look at it either. But um, anyway, sometimes I do have cause to look down. And that's what I do. One of the other things I use if I need super magnification for... Um, making stitch markers or doing diamond paintings um, are these. It's uh, like jeweler's loop. So they're very silly looking. Um, this one's hollow because I can't see out of this eye so I don't use that one. But it has all these different magnifications. And so I can pop in whatever kind of magnification I need. And I can get very, very close. I can do, I mean, diamond art and, uh, you know, doing seed beads is very tiny work. And I can do it if I have those. Um, most of my beading I do by feel also. I really don't do a lot by vision, which I'm glad for, um, that I can, you know, do that. I've known that my vision was going to go completely away, and so while I had vision, I was training myself how to how to do stuff. Um, this is not just a blind thing. This is an everybody thing. I found this on Amazon. Uh, it's got a gooseneck. Oh, sorry. It has a metal plate on it, and it came two to a pack, and this is actually a sewing machine light. Um, because I need lots of light to be able to do some of that stuff. And so I have one over here and then I have one on my sewing machine and I love those little babies. I mean, you can just pop it anywhere and it comes with this little metal disc that you can adhere to anything if it's not metal to make it to where you can stick this baby on there. So that's pretty cool. Okay, how I thread my needles. Oh gosh, where did my other one go? <laughs> I'm not sure where it went. Well, fine girl problems. As soon as it's more than a few inches away from me, it might as well not exist. I have no idea where it went. Well, I still have this one. Okay, so because you won't be able to see through Well, maybe you could. I don't know. I can't. Um the one that I was trying to find is a single one but this one does large needles like large odd needles and small odd needle eye needles um, and so what you do is you put your needle in here eye down and then you'll loop your thread through this little crevice right here and then right here on the front there is a thing that's going to push it through. It's even kind of doing it to the yarn right now. So let's just say this was thread. Then you'll have your long working end and the short end. You'll pull your short end out and then you'll lift your needle out and it is threaded for you. To any of my non-sided people who are using this, um, I will link it below. Most of my stuff comes from a magazine called, or a catalog called Maxi Aids. It is brilliantly helpful. Um, when you do this, you're going to want to put, set this down on a desk and either put your hand on top between the two areas that your needle goes into, um, or just hold, you know, the one side, but keep your hand away from the side that your needle is going into. Because when you push this thing out, that pushes the thread through the eye of your needle, um, a pretty pokey metal piece comes out the side of it. Um, and then your needles also point up, so you could stick yourself that way. So, I mean, as we usually do, we, you know, pretty gently and slowly feel anywhere that we're going. So, you're going to feel what I'm talking about. But this is a lifesaver because I 
there's just zero chance I can thread a needle on my own. Um, another thing that I use a lot, now I don't use a lot of cash, but when I do, um, this is an Abil reader, and these are available for free to uh, people who are visually impaired. Um, there are a number of things that are actually free to us. You can get a, a cane, like a seeing eye cane. Um, it's not the collapsible folding kind, it's just the rigid ones, which I don't really like those, but, um, there are webs, there is a website, I will link it below, of where you can get this, uh, free for the blind. Anybody who is not blind, you do have to pay for it, and they are, like, $150, I think. Um, but, you take your bill, and you put it in the reader one. and it reads it to you and it will tell you whether it's a one a five a 20 um these are great for a number of reasons one used to before those were a thing we were taught how to fold our money particular ways you to have in your wallet or whatever um so that we knew what we were giving out Tens were folded differently from fives, from ones, etc. Problem is, is it people, and it's happened to me many times, like to some people take advantage of it. They'll tell you you only handed them a ten so that you'll give them more money, or they'll only give you change for a certain denomination when they actually are supposed to give you more. They'll they'll tell you that it was, oh yes, we gave you a five and or we gave you a ten and, and a and a one when it was really two ones and they pocketed the rest this makes it to where you do it in front of them everybody is kept honest um, it's unfortunate but it happens a lot so that has been that has been great to have um, the final thing I think this is the only other thing I brought over to me I s predict this being a mess so we shall see um, but this is a uh, liquid indicator. So I'll put this on my cup. I'm going to put it over here. And then there are two level indications. This, the long ones on the outside, it will start to warn you that you're getting close to the top. And then the very top one, it screams at you and lets you know you are very, very, very close to the top. Stop pouring immediately. Um, so, I'm pouring slowly. So that's the first one, and that is the second one. Okay. So that's nice to have, especially with hot water, because again, <clears throat> back in the day, before this was a thing, um, the way that we poured liquid was rather unhygienic. It was to put our finger over it, and that's how you knew when to stop. Um, so I like this much better. No fingers in the dishes. I have a lot more, a lot more things. I don't know if you guys are really interested in it or not. That I'll probably sprinkle, you know, throughout as they become necessary. Like CCTV, which is a it's like a TV and it has a tray underneath it that you put your book or whatever you want to read on and it magnifies it big on the TV. It, and I, I say TV, I don't mean very big. I mean probably like 15 inches maybe or something. Mine is prehistoric. Mine is from the 90s probably. When I got it, it was old. They have nice new fancy ones now that I don't know how anybody affords, but... <laughs> um, I have a uh, monocular. It's like a binocular, but I only see out of one eye. So it's just for one eye. Helps see distance. But my main thing is my phone. My phone is my eyes. I navigate the world with my phone. Um, I have things that read text aloud to me. Uh, my screen reader. My camera is my big one. I zoom in on everything. It is, it is how I navigate the world. Um, 
I am, I have a couple, so a couple of videos coming up is the giveaway drawing tomorrow. I have another like, uh, you know, just yarn stuff coming in. I am dyeing yarn to sell. Um, I am selling yarn. I haven't had my first customer yet, but um, I'm also making stitch markers. So even though I haven't had that big like debut video where I'm showing what is for sale, I do made to order as well. If there is something that anybody wants, a colorway or anything like that, just email me down below and let me know. Um, another video I'm going to do is about, because one of the things I want to do on this channel is blind awareness, and it's about statistics and uh, things like that, bringing more awareness out. Like, for instance, because uh, I am passionate about all of this, something that really bothers me that affects me in my day-to-day is um, like there are laws that require ramp accessibility for all buildings and for all crosswalks and you know access points as it should be but there is nothing requiring I don't know I don't know if most people I've talked to have never heard of this but um, there is a beeper indicator for uh, crossing streets where you can press it and it beeps on the other side to let blind people know which direction to walk and when it's safe to walk. Um, usually they're in college towns, but not even then. It's They're very rare. The only place I've ever seen it was by the School for the Blind that I went to, and that's it. Um, ramps should be required, absolutely. This should be required as well just like the visual indicator, you know, anyway, um, it is required for TV, streaming, movies, um, anything like that for there to be closed captioning as it should be, but there are not requirements for video description, for audio description. Um, which is frustrating. I don't watch movies, I listen to them, so that's still not something that... Blindness doesn't often have the same uh, push behind it that uh, physical impairments or um, deafness has as far as, you know, rights and accommodations and things like that. And, um, it's unfortunate. I mean, we are a small, a small minority group of people, but you know, we would like the same sort of things too. So we're always pushing for these things. I'm pushing for these things. That's why I like the channels that are all about awareness and talking about these things. Um, so I have more stuff to come like that. I'm working on that video right now. Um, but those are just like a couple of the things that a lot of people probably don't think about unless it directly affects you or somebody that you are close to. It isn't really something most people think about, but it greatly affects the people who it pertains to. Um, it's very unsafe for me to cross the street. I'm perfectly capable of doing it without the beeper sound because I know how to listen for traffic. I did a lot of O&M uh, training growing up. Um, so I know how to do that, but not everybody had that. And it, I mean, it's dangerous for a sighted person to cross the street. Uh, I've been hit by a car before, and most of the blind people I know have been hit by cars before. Even with a seeing eye dog, well, not really with a seeing eye dog, but even with a cane, um, making it very clear and evident that this person is visually impaired. It happens all the time. So... Anyway, those are just things I like to, you know, the more people talk about it, the more things can hopefully start to change. And, um, yeah, so I will link these things below. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow when we do the giveaway drawing. And, uh, hopefully we get to 300 soon. We'll do the 300 giveaway and 400, 500 all the way up. And, um... I'm thinking about doing my first live. What do you guys think? Who do you think I should do it with? I'm nervous. Will you watch? All right, I will talk to you guys later.